BZK here, so lately I've been thinking about what could be the next meta with all the changes that have happened and are going to happen with this next patch buffing Bastion and arguably a bit too much. And the one thing that really stands out to me and has been for a while, hands down, has been the dive comp. Without a doubt, it's one of the most effective yet amazingly fun ways to play Overwatch. Now what you're watching is a two-parter, the dive comp on attack and solid Genji gameplay on defense. And I'll be explaining how to be effective with each and how to really shut down the enemy team. Drop a like in the video and subscribe if you love to play competitive Overwatch or if you like this kind of content in general. Okay, so right away, what is a dive comp and what are the heroes that are in it? Basically, the dive comp is a specifically built team meant to literally dive right into the objective and bring the fight to the enemy team as opposed to playing the slow and sluggish shield war between the two Reinhardts. The team is comprised of mainly Lucio and Zenyatta for your healers. Lucio for the speed boost primarily, but his alt and line of sight healing are just too easy and effective to use. Zenyatta for his ranged healing and damage, his discords help focus firing a specific target, and his ult is very strong against a lot in the game. Your two tanks will primarily be Zarya and Winston, and the fate of this comp is heavily on Winston because he can dive right into the team to disrupt while Zarya bubbles him to get herself some free charge. Meanwhile, Winston is doing a lot of damage and staying alive and getting support from your DPS in Genji and Tracer, and sometimes even Soldier. If Winston dies, you will need to regroup as best you can unless you guys have numbers. He is crucial to your team survivability. Now Genji and Tracer both work really well together with the mobility and quick DPS, but also their ultimates both benefit from Zarya's Graviton Surge. When Winston drop, drops his shield, he helps squishy heroes like Tracer and Genji to stay alive a lot longer to get enough heals from your supports. The synergy between these six heroes is a never-ending cycle because they all benefit from each other in some way, shape, or form. When coordinated well, it is very annoying and very hard counter. With all that being said, what is the basic strategy while using the dive count? Well, what I have seen the most is that Winston and Lucio both initiate the fight with Lucio's team speed boosted in, while Winston dives in and starts damaging the enemy team, preferably an enemy healer. Meanwhile, Zarya bubbles to Winston as he lands from his leap, and this gives the DPS heroes enough time to flank the enemy's supports, then they would help Winston, or Winston would help the DPS heroes, in which he would then drop his shield, helping everyone stay alive while getting heals from Lucio and Zen. Now, Zenyatta plays sort of this lead role too, in that he leads a team to which target has his aura of discord, so you can all pounce on them and then proceed to focus fire the absolute dog shit out of them. Now, the alt usage is very important with this kind of comp. As I said before, the Zarya ult helps both Genji's sword and Tracer's pulse bomb to hopefully wipe the enemy team. Not to mention Winston can damage damn near everyone in the Graviton Surge too. Tracer's ult can be used for guaranteeing a kill on a crucial hero like a Mercy or a damaged Roadhog. A good Genji and Tracer in this comp should always be finding ways to damage the enemy while staying alive and trying to be these pesky annoying flies that just piss off the enemy team. Lucio usually uses his ult then speed boosts in to initiate the dive and actually start the fight, but his ult helps counter a push very nicely as well. This leaves Zenyatta the privilege of countering an enemy ult or two like a Zarya Surge and a Hanzo Dragon or like a Reaper Death Blossom, hell even a Mate Blizzard. Both supports have very good defensive alts that can be used both defensively and offensively in the exact same ways. It's all based on coordination and I guess what situation you're in. One thing to keep in mind is that when Winston is using his Primal Rage, all eyes go on him, leaving your DPS for some easy picks on the other team. But once your team has countered an enemy push, usually including a few enemy ultimates, then that's when you strike back in with, say, a Tracer Bomb on a support, then a Zarya Genji combo to wipe the rest of the team or something. Obviously, this won't happen every single time, but it's good that you start to try and coordinate every attack you make. This comp requires a lot of practice and communication, but believe me, it's worth learning, in my opinion. Moving on to Genji on defense, your main goal is to be as annoying as possible from all angles. Genji is one of the best heroes for 1v1 engagements, and if a support is caught out of position, Genji will make them pay. Sure, you are defending the objective, but he can still pick his fights fairly well, and good Genjis rely on their confidence to know how to time things so well. But make no mistake about it, without supports, he is very vulnerable. If Genji is out of position, it's a free kill for the enemy team, essentially. So this means you have to attack with a specific goal in mind to 
and, and to know how to escape when it gets messy. It does take practice to recognize those kinds of situations, but once you do, man, you will be staying alive a lot longer. Another thing that makes Genji so lethal is the fact that he can pick apart enemy supports when timed properly. Getting numbers early, let alone getting a support pick, is huge for your team. Genji's biggest priority has to be like an Ana to prevent anti-heals or probably mercy if the enemy has one, solely to stop the res. So when ulting, dash in the air for 4 to get a better idea of where the enemy supports are. Then pop your ult and dash straight back down and finish them off with the dragon blade. With Genji's flanking capabilities, it's a must for him to get a support pick as best as he can. Then your team quickly has the huge advantage. Now what you are about to watch is a terrible, terrible Genji ult. But it's good at the same time. Check it out. So I started to see that the other team was starting to push up mid so they no doubt had some ults. But we had Nano Blade, which just pretty much wrecks everything. We get a pick early so they were already screwed, but they did manage to kill our soldier. We popped Nano Blade and I immediately killed Mercy. Now, why the hell didn't I stay on Zarya there? Her shield was about to go down and she even ran towards a weak Lucio. What I should have done was kill Zarya, finish off Lucio, then dash over to Ryan and kill him if he wasn't already. I even think Anna was by him too. Anyway, my point is, know your plan when you attack. My dumbass completely disregarded the fact I had two free kills essentially right in front of me. As Genji, or anyone for that matter, it's important to acknowledge as many enemies as possible to help with your awareness so you can attack more efficiently and ultimately stay alive. Genji can't really do much if he doesn't have support around him, so watch out for your team's healers and tanks and play around them to catch the other team off guard with quick and elusive attacks to finish off kills. The idea is to catch the other team's attention, allowing for someone like your team's Ryan to earth shatter when not expected. If you find yourself pursuing multiple targets, it's always a good idea to wait for your tanks and attack together. Genji is good at 1v1s, not 1v3s, so be sure you are attacking with your team. With Season 3 now over, you guys can start to practice new heroes and new strategies, including the divecom. You will start to see what works, who counters who, and when you should use them. One hero I really want to get good with is Sombra, particularly because the new Bastion buffs are coming soon, and she is even more important as she directly counters Bastion or any other heavy ability based hero. But just like Genji or Tracer, she can be very annoying when behind enemy lines when hacking like say a Reinhardt or a Mercy. That's just my main pick. If you guys like, leave a comment down below as to which hero you want to get better with because as it is right now, the meta seems pretty balanced if I must say. But I also think it's important to learn different heroes to figure out how to counter them when they're being used against you. Nothing more frustrating than a well-positioned Bastion or a Torp turret, believe me. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like on the video if you like this kind of content or you guys want to see more Genji gameplay. I finally managed to hit Masters on both of my accounts with him and I have plenty more Genji videos you're not going to want to miss. So be sure to subscribe and guys have a nice day. YouTube, peace out.